Welcome to Dr. Chester Talks, and I'm gonna talk about this. Shit! Anyway, uh, the aviationist, a Chinese HCSK bombers flew inside Taiwan. Taiwan's other years as US aircraft carrier in the South China Sea. So let me put it this way, that that carrier was sent by Trump to keep the Chinese out of the way. So this is not... Mm -hmm. uh, not uh, anyway, speaking of... Uh, anyway, sorry. It's kind of downpouring outside, so... Anyway. A uh, spi uh, spike of Chinese incursions and presence of HC-6K bombers able to carry anti-ship cruise missiles inside the southwestern corner of Taiwan air defense identification zone I mean escalating tensions in the region. Okay, I'm gonna, I think it's visible over here. Let's suffice to say that China has been increasing its tensions against its neighboring countries. For instance, well, the power kind of don't okay. Uh, for instance, uh, the Chinese has been uh, has had a tendency to, well, invade other countries, uh, India, the uh, territorial waters of Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Japan, Malaysia, and many many other countries in the region, especially in Taiwan. But even more interesting, hmm. but even more interesting is that um, I'm gonna have to wrap up this video quite fast. Gonna be a short one, so if you'll excuse me. It's interesting because as soon as Biden took presidency, they have done something that we haven't seen probably ever. It's the quantity of airplanes that went into this Addis zone that I'm gonna talk about. 13 Chinese combat aircraft, including 8 H-6K bombers. Obviously, these are absolutely very dated, but they still pose a threat to Taiwan. Four J-16 fighters, one Y-8 anti-submarine warfare aircraft, followed, followed the following day by 15 ones. Jesus Christ, this is a lot. Two Su-30s, Four J-16s, six J-10s, two Y-8s, and one Y-8 reconnaissance aircraft. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Alright, I'm back. I had to close it because it's uh, it's pissing about time. So excuse me, let's continue. Th uh, those things, that quantity of airplanes hasn't seen been seen near that region like forever. And that means let's see. Uh, China's PLA Liberation Army and Force and Navy regularly operate in this space over the waters between Taiwan and uh, that Beijing claims as its own land and the Taiwan controlled Pratas Island. In the South of China Sea, these munitions generally consist of just one or two ISRs, Intelligent Surveillance Reconnaissance or ASW anti-submarine warcraft. Oh shit, <laughs> warfare aircraft. Jesus Christ, I'm off. Uh, it's because it's raining and I'm afraid of I'm gonna lose the power and this video is going to be lost. I'm sorry. For this reason, the presence of almost 30 aircrafts of all times, including as many as 8 H6K cruise missile carriers, is quite unusual. And I have got to admit it. It's very unusual. The J-16 seems to be the MiG-29s of the Russians that the Chinese reverse engineer and bootlegged to create their own. Eh, typical. But this is the result, the actual result of what happens when a certain someone takes presidency in a certain in certain country who is kind of a puppet of a certain, a certain country. And um, it's bound to get worse. Will Mr. Beijing Biden uh, stand up to the challenge and defend Taiwan when shit comes to shove? Hmm? Or uh, I don't know. I don't have much faith into that, considering that the previous presidency before Trump with Obama 
they were kind of getting cold with the Chinese enemies, as in Philippines, South Korea, Japan, the other countries were getting quite cold in relations with America, and America was approaching more and more to the Chinese, because thanks to Mr. Obama and Mr. Biden. Right now I'm not so quite sure if the Biden will stand up for the Taiwanese based on those, uh, on those details. Alright. Uh, it's great to be a soft chinny key. Okay, um, all right, here it is. Some of what you see, the, Ch uh, the Chinese are actually even building islands around the, the coastal areas of various nations to try and claim that the sea territory because there's a lot of resources around these areas. And unfortunately, many of the countries in the region are not able to actually police it themselves it's quite saddening really but it's the outcome of china constant militaristic approach to everything they do but the problem is they do not seem to be limited to the militaristic approach either for instance they actually are trying to uh, conquer culturally and other things africa and latin america for instance, there's a lot of constructions and things like that, uh, public transportations, all that made in China. For instance, just recently, Nigeria opened a, a, a train line made by China, built with Chinese money with Chinese assets. These are the problems you are facing, because China owns a lot of land in Latin America and in Africa. This, this is definitely something that you should be worried about because China is notoriously, notoriously known to be quite bellicose in on itself. Anyway, uh, okay, considering that it's, it's top to down powering, but still, the power is a bit iffy. I don't know. I don't know, I don't want to risk it. So anyway, uh, I wanted to go a bit further on this, but suffice to say, it's uh, it's troubling, especially because someone in the White House is a puppet of said country. Anyway, don't forget to don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video if you want a more tame approach and more uh, normy content relatively normy, stay right here on youtube.com forward slash Dr. Jester. If you want more spicy content, head to minds.com forward slash Dr. Jester. So, thank you for watching. See you on my next video. Good night.